In this video, you'll learn how to create a task scheduler using Spring Boot 3 and IntelliJ IDEA Ultimate Edition. Along the way, I'll show you how you can use the application.properties file to manage your Spring Boot configuration and how you can override those settings on the command line at runtime. Let's get started. Let's create our project by clicking on New Project. Notice Spring Initializer is built into IntelliJ Ultimate and is selected as our generator over on the left side. We'll make a few changes on this screen. We'll give our project the name Scheduler. Next, we'll select Maven as our build system, and we'll change our group and make it com.beginsecure. JDK 17 is selected, which is necessary for Spring Boot 3 projects. Let's check the box for Create Git Repository, which will create a local repository on our system that we can commit and push as we develop our project. Everything looks good, so let's click Next. On this screen, we can add any starter dependencies we might need for our application. For this project, we don't need any dependencies, so let's go ahead and click Create. I'll speed up the video when IntelliJ is performing background tasks. Let's go over to the project panel and open up the scheduler application class where our main method is located. Along the top of the screen, we see an error indicating IntelliJ could not locate our JDK. So let's click on Setup SDK to fix that. Remember for Spring Boot 3, we have to use version 17 or greater of the JDK. So let's select the Temerin 1705 version. The error is gone, so all is good. Over on the project panel, let's add a package to our project where we'll store our scheduler tasks. We'll select New, then Package. We'll create a new package called Tasks. Next, in that directory, we'll create a new class called My First Task. The first thing we want to do here is set up access to the logger. We'll create a new variable called log of type logger, and we'll initialize it with the loggerfactory.getLogger method, and we'll pass the name of our class as a parameter. Next, we need a method that we'll use for scheduling. We'll call our method PerformTask. It will take no parameters and return void. For this project, rather than making some complicated task that causes us to miss the point of the project, we'll create a very simple task that's going to log a message with the current timestamp and nothing else. Let's add a log entry. We'll add a call to log.info and we'll simply write the message, performing my task at with curly braces. The curly braces are a placeholder in the message string where you can pass in a value separating the message and value with a comma. For the date timestamp, we'll use the modern way of writing a date by using instant.now. It returns a string formatted as datetimeformatter.isoinstant, which is a much better way to get the date and time rather than the old, clumsy, simple date formatter and Java util date approach I see in so many other people's code. Let's fix our import statement with alt enter. Now we have to add some annotations so Spring will recognize our code and schedule our task. First, we'll add an add component annotation to the class. When Spring scans our code, it will instantiate this class and inject any dependencies it requires and inject this class wherever it might be needed. We also need to add an annotation to our perform task method. First, we'll add the add scheduled annotation. It allows us to configure and schedule tasks. The rules for using it are, the annotated method should typically return void. If it does return some value, the value will be ignored. Also, the method should not expect any parameters. For the scheduled annotation, we'll configure a parameter called fixed rate. This parameter is a long and allows us to specify the number of milliseconds between invocations of our task. We'll set it to 1,000, meaning 1,000 milliseconds, so that our task will run every second and write a message to our log file. Let's go back to the scheduler application and we'll add the enable scheduling annotation to the class. This annotation enables Spring Schedule Task Execution capability. And that's it for the initial coding. Let's run our code locally by clicking on the green triangle in the gutter. Once our code is built and deployed, we see in our log file that we have entries for performing my task at, and then some time is mentioned. The first entry is for 14, 13, 58. The next entry is for 59, then 0, 1, 2, and so on. We can see our task is running every second. Great. So let's go ahead and stop that. Now at this point, we're done. We've written our scheduler. However, we've hard coded in the time interval, so let's make it a little bit more robust. Rather than hard coding in the value of 1,000 milliseconds, we're going to make it a configuration item that we can put in our application.properties file 
or if we choose, supply it on the command line at runtime. Back in our code, the first thing to know is the fixed rate parameter is a type long. There's an equivalent version of this parameter that's a string called fixed rate string. Let's change the name of our parameter. And then instead of a thousand, we'll use the spring expression to externalize the configuration so we can store it in the application.properties file. The property we'll use is fixed rate.in.milliseconds. Once we make the change, we'll give it a quick test. We'll go back to our main method and close out of the old run window. Then we'll run the code again using the green start button in the gutter. Recall that nowhere did we set the value for fixed rate time, so there's nowhere it can be picked up from. So we'll see what happens when we run the code. Just as we might expect, we get an error. If we scroll up and look at the log, we see that we get a message, could not resolve placeholder fixed rate in milliseconds. This is a really good error message and is super helpful for diagnosing the problem. We even see the name of the bean that Spring tried to create for us, which happens to be the name of our class. We'll close the run window, and go back to my first task file, and this time we'll add a default value in case we forget to set the value in the future. The Spring expression language allows us to supply default values. In this case, we can put in a colon after the name of the property and the default value should it not be set. We'll add a value of 1000 or 1 second like we had previously. If no value is supplied, we'll use the default value of 1000 milliseconds. Let's run the application again. This time, when it starts up, everything looks good. And notice our log message is being written every second. We see the 45, 46, 47, 48, and so forth. So we're all good here. Let's stop that. Now we'll go to our application.properties file and add in the property name so we can externalize our configuration with the properties file. Let's close out our run window. We'll go to my first task and copy the property name, fixed rate in milliseconds, so we don't make any mistakes. Go to the application.properties file and paste the property name there. And we'll set it equal to 5,000 milliseconds or five seconds to make sure it's noticeably different than when we ran our code using one second. Now let's go back to our scheduler application and run it again. Now when our code runs, notice the log entries are coming much less frequently. The first message we see is at 33 seconds. The next one's at 38 seconds, then 43 seconds. We can see a pattern. We're writing these messages every five seconds. So that worked, great. But the application properties file was used to configure our application. Let's stop the application. Let's say that our application development is done and we're ready to package and deploy our application. Let's use Maven to do that. We'll open up the Maven window over on the right and under scheduler, open lifecycle, and then we'll click on package and run that. Let's open up the target folder over in the project panel so we can see when our jar file is built and available. After a little bit, our jar is built and available, so let's go ahead and close out of the run window. We'll open a terminal. We know our jar is in the target directory, so let's cd into the target directory. We'll run dir to confirm the jar is there. Now let's verify that we're running Java 17 by typing in Java dash dash version. And we are indeed running JDK version 17, which is awesome. So let's go ahead and run Java dash jar then the name of the jar file, scheduler001 snapshot.jar, and now we'll pass in the parameter we've been using. Let's go get it from the application.properties file, and we'll add dash dash to the command line, then paste in the property, and set it equal to 9,000 milliseconds, or nine seconds. Once again, we want to make sure it's significantly different than our previous two runs. And then we'll hit enter to run our code. Our application starts up, our first message says our task was performed at 32 seconds. Then our next entry comes in at 41 seconds. It's looking good. Our next entry comes in at 50 seconds. All right, we can see that our entries are coming every nine seconds. Once again, we demonstrated that our change works. So let's summarize what we learned. We have three levels of configuration here. We have a default setting in our code for a thousand in case we forget to set it anywhere else. Then in our application.properties file, we have it set to 5,000 milliseconds. And finally, at runtime, we've overridden that value and set it to 9,000 milliseconds. Oh, and along the way, we learned how to create and configure a scheduler.
All right, that's it. If you found this video useful, please subscribe to help the channel grow and to be alerted when new content's released. Thanks for watching, and remember to always begin secure.